I'm Shay Elliott of the blog, The Elliott Homestead. Welcome to my grocery store. I live in Washington State in the Pacific Northwest, right in the middle of the state, which is a high desert. And because we're in the north part of North America, that means we go about six months a year without being able to grow anything on our little two and a half acre farm here. We grow so much of what we eat when we can, but for those other six months, we rely on what we put up in our root cellar and food storage to eat from. Now, that of course doesn't mean that we grow everything that we eat. There are some things that we buy in the store that either we don't want to grow or that we can't grow here. But I want to take you down to our root cellar or our grocery store as we call it and show you what eating in autumn looks like from the cold storage. Before we head down to the root cellar, I want to talk about a few questions that I've been getting a lot. I asked over on Instagram what questions you guys have about the root cellar and the same questions kept coming up over and over again. One is how do I build a root cellar? I have no idea. This root cellar was part of our original house which was built somewhere around uh, 1900. And so we didn't build it, we didn't engineer it, we didn't plan it out, it just was here as a wonderful perk of buying this little cottage here in the orchards. The other question I get a lot is how do we keep pests out of our root cellar? And I wish I had a clear cut answer for you. We do deal with mice because our house is completely surrounded by orchards. Uh, so we keep cats and we keep mouse traps out a lot in the cold room. We try to keep as many foods as we can in glass jars because it just helps to keep any sort of weevils or beetles or little moths or such out. Um, other than that, pests are not a major problem. Mice are definitely the biggest one. And so just keeping cats. Another question we get asked a lot is what temperature we keep our root cellar. So the first part of the root cellar, the first room you walk into is whatever temperature the weather decides it's going to be. In the summer, this is much warmer. I would say like high 70s, maybe even low 80s. And in the winter, it hovers somewhere between 40 and 50 degrees depending. So this means that foods like onions or garlic, they don't stay super well in that first room during the summertime. But this isn't the time of year where we're eating food from the root cellar. By then we've moved on to vegetables and such from the garden. And so the cold room works really well year round for things like meats or cheeses or preserves or ferments. But that first room where all we keep our onions and potatoes and garlic and things like that, that works best in the winter time when it stays a little bit colder. Autumn is the time here on our little small farm where we really start relying on the food that we've put up in our root cellar. So I joke that it's our grocery store, but this is where we go to gather, to shop, and to savor the flavors of the seasons past. So let's go shopping. I think one of the misconceptions about food storage or wanting to be your own grocery store is that it's done for some crazy political move or even a self-sufficiency move. And that's really not our objective here on our small farm. We do this almost purely for the culinary enjoyment of it because food that we grow, food that has a story tastes really good. We enjoy the process of it. And if we didn't, we probably wouldn't be nearly as inclined to put in all this work. 
But no, you don't have to be a doomsday prepper to enjoy a food storage pantry. Honestly, a big part of why we put up all this food is because I just really dislike going to the grocery store. I like being at home much more and it saves me all that time, all the driving, dealing with the parking lots. I'm much happier here. So obviously eating in the autumn from the root cellar looks a lot like what you would expect this time of year. It means a lot of soups and stews, a lot of saved root vegetables. Now this is a Copenhagen market cabbage. If you'd like a complete list of the exact varieties of storage vegetables I grow, be sure to check out the show notes below and I will tag a post where I tell you exactly what I grow. This is a Copenhagen market cabbage. It is a staple crop for us every single year because it stores really well. But you'll notice that even being in storage, the, le the leaves will get a little bit gross and they'll continue to get grosser as the seasons go on. That's okay. Just peel them back until they look really good. It's totally fine to eat. These are the pickles that we made together a couple of months ago here on YouTube, and they are beautiful. So a lot of times with a meal, we will just take out a little plate of fermented vegetables, be it fermented beets or sauerkraut or pickles, and everyone just adds a little bit of fermented food to their dish. Now, one of the questions I get about fermented foods a lot is what if there's a little bit of scum on top? Totally fine. Remember we talked about this with the oxygen. Oxygen will cause that. Just push it aside and dig down and you can see these pickles are still very crispy, very good. One question that I hear from viewers a lot is what does this look like for me if I live in Florida or if I live in Texas or if I live in Arizona? Here's my encouragement to you. You do not have to do this because you can grow year round in so many places in the United States. It's such a vastly different country all over the place. And like I mentioned, because we're in the north, we can't grow year round. If I could grow year round, I wouldn't go to the effort to put nearly this amount of food up. But all that's to say, before we had a root cellar, there were some things that we did to just sort of build out our food pantry. So one of the ways that we found we could build out our food grocery pantry before we had our root cellar was just to store big tubs of things in closets. And in the beginning, this just looked like a big bucket of sugar, a big bucket of flour, some bigger jugs of olive oils and fats. And this was an easy way for us to sort of get our feet wet in the process of this. I actually remember filling big plastic bins and cardboard boxes with potatoes from the farmer's market and then pushing those underneath beds because that's all the storage that we had. And this might be the case for you. You might not have a root cellar, most houses don't, but you might have an unheated garage or an unheated room or an unheated basement, something that can kind of work for storage in that way. The point is food storage and enjoying this is partly a mindset. It's partly looking at your situation, whether you're in an apartment or whether you're in a farmhouse and thinking, how can I make this work for me culinarily with what I want to eat and what I want to store with what I grow? Our root vegetables are stored in bins in the actual cold room, the fridge cold room, and we store them in layers of dirt. And I get asked how we keep them from going soft. Well, it's quite simple. I'll tag a video that shows you how to do it below, but as long as the dirt isn't too moist, these will stay perfectly fresh as long as you're growing a storage variety until your next harvest. So what do we keep in the cold room 
and what do we just keep in the general root cellar? There are some vegetables that will just store for much longer when they're a lot colder, like fridge cold. Things like beets and carrots really like it in there. That's also where I keep all my ferments. And so this might mean, if you're wanting to get into this, that you need to get an extra refrigerator and put it out in the garage or put it in the shop. I've actually borrowed my mom's garage refrigerator quite a few times before we had our walk-in cooler. And so it's kind of gonna be specific to your situation and what you can and can't do, but just get creative with it and find a little spot here or there to shove a little bit of extra. Squashes and potatoes and garlic and onions, they don't like a moist cold. And so I don't keep them in the refrigerator room. I just keep them in the general root cellar where it's really dry and through the winter is cold enough to keep them happy. Any seasonal fruits that we can make last a little bit longer into the winter, like pears and apples, I also keep in the really cold room because that helps them to just last for longer. And kept there at about 35 degrees, we can get them to last usually until about January. Most of our meat that we harvest here on our farm, we just put into the freezer. We grow about six lambs and a beef and a pig and a slew of ducks every year for just our family's consumption. But some of that meat really lends itself well to dry curing. And that's what we do with our pork belly and with copa and pancetta and prosciutto. And these are all meats that like to be dry. If you keep them in the really cold room, they'll, they'll go moldy. So keep them in the general root cellar where there's a lot of airflow and it's not too humid. This actually brings up a great point of conversation, which is mold and humidity. I get asked a lot, what's the humidity level in your root cellar? I have no idea. Here where we are in Washington, there's almost no humidity at all. Our root cellar does have a dirt gravel floor and it stays sort of semi-ish moist just from residual moisture from the earth. Um, so this helps to keep it from being too dry, but it's not nearly humid enough to cause mold. So I wish I could speak to this more for those of you that are in super humid climates, but unfortunately I just can't. It's not something we battle here. If you would like to see how we cook with all of this delicious food, be sure to visit us at cook.theelliothomestead.com to learn more about our cooking community where we do just that.